Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to U.S. History Through Film as we look at the worksheet that accompanies the movie Princess Kaiulani. Um, number five, we see a great ceremony where Princess Kaiulani lights the city of Honolulu, um, a scene supposedly set in 1889, although in fact the real lighting ceremony took place March 24th, 1888. However, Honolulu really was illuminated um, in a big ceremony which Princess Lilio Kailani and Princess Kailani attended, although Kailani herself did not really throw the switch, is thrown rather less, uh, less dramatically by the superintendent of the Honolulu Electric Works, a Mr. Faulkner, and was done at the electric light station, not the palace. The palace had been lit by electricity for a couple years already. Number six, we see a group of citizens demand the king sign a new constitution. Um, by which they mean the bayonet constitution. Although, in fact, that did not happen at the lighting ceremony, um, or even the same year as the lighting ceremony, or the year it's claimed to be set in the movie, but earlier, in 1887. Um, between June 30th of 1887 and July 6th of that year, a group of white business leaders and politicians with their own militia forced Ke King David Kalakaua to sign a new constitution, in the Bayonet Constitution. Although Lauren Thurston um, was an important figure uh, in creating the Bayonet Constitution and forcing it on the king, um, although Samuel Dole, Sanford Dole, pardon me, was one of the authors of the Constitution too. Number eight, Kailani is sent to England for her own safety. Um, and that was certainly true, although she was sent as well um, to get an education. Um, in reality, as in the movie, she stayed with the family of Theophilus Davies. Uh, he was a friend of Kailani's father. He also had significant business interests in Hawaii, later inherited by his son, the uh, Theophilus Clive Davies. Indeed, their business became one of the biggest in Hawaii, part of a group known as the Big Five that had huge uh, economic and political power in Hawaii. Number 14, um, and we see uh, a group of Howley businessmen, Howley referring to uh, someone not from Hawaii, um, typically white people, but it could be anyone who is not native Hawaiian, technically. Um, and this refers to the formation of the Bayonet Constitution, although now um, suggesting it took place several years after it did. Um, again, mixing up the uh, the timeline of the Bayonet Constitution just a little bit more. Um, number 15, um, we see that people in Hawaii who do not own land cannot vote. And that was not unusual at all. Many places, including the early United States in the 1700s and very early 1800s, limited the right to vote to landowners. Um, the idea being only they had the economic independence to vote independently. And of course, it also kept power in the hands of the existing upper class. And very few native Hawaiians owned land of their own, partly because under their own traditional society, most land was officially in the hands of a small class of chiefs and other nobility. Number 16, um, we see racism against Kaiulani in England, um, and also racism against the Irish, who were not really considered to be quite white either. Um, while, uh, while they use the term Negro in the movie, um, it may well replace another similar term, um, which was often used uh, for many non-white people, not just people of African origin, but within the British Empire, um, people from British India, um, or Arabs, uh, or others. Um, even in Canada. French-speaking Canadians in the military were sometimes told by their English officers to talk white. 17, 18, and 19 um, are all true. The King of Hawaii had, been, uh, had died uh, in January of 1891 because he and his wife had no children. He was replaced by his sister, Lilio Kalani. Um, she and her husband had no biological children of their own, all they had adopted three children. But the adopted children could not inherit the throne, meaning Kaiulani was now heir to the throne of Hawaii. Um, and number 22 is true. 
um, Queen Lilio Kalani did feel the bayonet constitution was illegal and illegitimate, and she did try to regain power for herself and for her people. Um, all it certainly is true. Part of that was regaining power for the royal family. Um, she was looking out for the Hawaiian people as a whole, but but the royal family in particular. Um, and number. Uh, in numbers 24 and 25, um, we see a romance developing between the princess and Clive, um, in which he asks her to marry him, and she agrees, um, on, the, on the understanding that should she have to go back to Hawaii, he'll go with her. This is entirely fictional. Um, now, it is true that she knew Clive Davies, um, as far as I know, got along with him, but there's no evidence of romance that I'm aware of. Um, when she was very young, Princess Kyolani's uncle had tried to arrange a marriage between her and a Japanese prince to try to build better relations between those two, uh, those two island kingdoms. But it was turned down. Um, the Japanese prince, or at least the Japanese royal family, did not see a need for connection with the Hawaiian royal family. In 1898, um, Kaiolani announced that she was engaged to Prince David Kawanakanaka Ka Kaoa um, in arranged marriage, um, but her early death prevented that ever happening. So while there was uh, more than one attempt at an arranged marriage in her life, as far as I know, there was no actual romance between her and Clive Davies. Um, number 28 claims Hawaii has the highest literacy rate in the world. And that may have been true. They certainly had one of the highest literacy rates. The royal family um, and missionaries both encouraged literacy among Hawaiians, and uh, the literacy rate was around 90% by the late 1800s. Very impressive by the standards of the day, um, and pretty good even by modern standards. Um, in number 29, um, it's claimed that. Princess Kaiolani's family line dates back um, dates back pretty far, which is a bit of an exaggeration. The actual royal family of Hawaii could only trace their ancestry back a couple of centuries. Um, uh, numbers 32 and 35 both refer to the overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy in January of 1893 with help from the U.S. Marines, uh, who were called in by the U.S. Minister to Hawaii after he was told that American lives and property were in danger. Again, an excuse by, uh, by some local landowners to get help from the U.S. Um, in overthrowing the Queen. Queen Lilio Kalani was placed under arrest in the Iolani Palace um, and ultimately ordered her forces to stand down to avoid further loss of life. Number 33 and 34 um, are partly true. Um, there were there were uprisings um, against the uh, against the Haole government in Hawaii. Um, a native Hawaiian by the name of Robert William uh, Kalanihiapo Wilcox led a rebellion against the Bayonet Constitution in 1889. Um, in addition, and while he was a native Hawaiian, he had also studied at the Italian Royal Military Academy in Turin, part of the Hawaiian. Um, royal family's attempts to modernize and build connections with the rest of the world. Again, he attempted a rebellion in 1889, which failed. Um, he attempted another rebellion against the Republic of Hawaii in 1895, which also failed, although Wilcox himself survived and eventually served as the territory of Hawaii's first delegate to the United States Congress. Uh, again, there was a rebellion, or two rebellions, known as the Wilcox Rebellions. Um, but did not go quite as shown in the movie. Um, number 44 says that Princess Kaiolani is much uh, lighter than she looks in the paper. Um, and there, were there were many illustrations of Princess Kaiolani, who was quite the celebrity. Um, and something that often came up in reports was that she had much lighter skin than people expected, and that was typically presented as a point in her favor. In a time of a great deal of racial prejudice, to be paler than expected 
um, was seen as a positive point um, for someone expected to be uh, particularly foreign and dangerously dark. Number 45, Princess Keelani gets to meet Grover Cleveland, the President of the United States, who is opposed to American imperialism and had convinced Congress not to annex Hawaii right after the overthrow of the monarchy, had even proposed using the U.S. military to restore Liliuokalani to her throne. However, um, Grover Cleveland did not run for re-election in 1896, um, due in part to his opposition to a major strike in 1894 that lost him a lot of support from the working class, and his opposition to minting silver dollars during the Panic of 1893, which would have created inflation, um, which many people thought would alleviate the panic, and would have helped out Western silver miners too. Um, thus turning off other important Democratic constituencies. The next Democratic candidate, William Jennings Bryan, also opposed imperialism, but the people would elect and then re-elect a Republican, William McKinley, who supported imperialism. Um, and of course, he's mentioned number 47, the next president was William McKinley. Number 51 um, states the Queen of Queen Lily Okalani was hosting a kind of funeral um, for the Hawaiian nation, and she did hold a funeral um, for the Kingdom of Hawaii. Number 55, um, Thurston's encouraging his dinner guest to try the poi. I'm going to eat some with his fingers. Poi is a traditional pudding uh, made in Hawaii and some other Polynesian islands, made from taro root. Uh, when it's served fresh, it's sweet and it's sort of a dessert. It can also be fermented and is kind of like yogurt, and traditionally is eaten with the fingers. Um, it can be produced in different thicknesses, um, simply described as one, two, or three-fingered koi, depending on how many fingers you need to scoop up a good dish of it. And number 60, um, Princess Lilio Kalani wants universal suffrage for the people of Hawaii and the right to vote. Um, for all the people in Hawaii. Indeed, in the territory of Hawaii, there were no official racial restrictions on voting. There were residency requirements. You had to have lived in Hawaii for a certain length of time before you could vote, and that prevented many Japanese um, and Filipino and even European Hawaiians um, from voting for a time. And of course, at first, only men could vote. Um, but this did mean that about two-thirds of voters were native Hawaiians, at least early in the history of the territory of Hawaii. And this ended up delaying Hawaiian statehood um, until 1959, uh, as many U.S. politicians, especially from southern states, weren't comfortable allowing Hawaii to become a state, um, fearing that so many non-white voters would have too big a say in the government and maybe even send non-white congressmen and senators to Washington, D.C. Indeed, of these seven senators who have come from Hawaii since it became our 50th state, only two have been white. Um, on the other hand, only one has been of native Hawaiian ancestry. Um, the other four include one of Chinese ancestry and three of Japanese ancestry. And people of Japanese, uh, Chinese, and Filipino um, heritage having been encouraged to move to Hawaii um, to serve as cheap labor on the pineapple and sugar plantations. Um, indeed, uh, there were times when Hawaii was one of the few places where Asians could move to um, under the control of the United States uh, due to immigration restrictions created in the late 1800s and early 1900s.